ברוך אתה ה' אלוהינו מלך העולם, שהכל נהיה בדברו. As usual, we go to the Bible. We're going to the very beginning. There are four people around. Adam, Eve, Cain, and Abel. These are the four actors on the earth. And the Torah says that one day, for some reason, we don't know why, Cain kills his brother. How does he kill him? Who knows how he kills him? Did he know that he was killing him? Maybe he didn't even know that. We don't know really what happened. These are the very beginnings of the history of mankind. And we have to, each year, look into it again. And sometimes we get new insights into what really happened. Maybe it was, as the Torah says, that God received the offering of Abel. But when Cain came with his offering, God didn't like it. Actually, the idea was of Cain. Cain was the one that came up with the idea of an offering to God. Maybe that was it. Our rabbis also say, you know, in the beginning, there were just the two sons. What they did was divide up the world among them. What was on the earth and above, that would be Abel's territory. And what was below the ground, that would belong to Cain. Therefore, Cain was practicing agriculture. He was trying to bring out the forces, the strength, the energy from the earth. And one of his... Uh, Successors later on, one of his grandchildren, I think, I don't remember exactly, was the first one to start mining metals from the earth. And on the other hand, Abel was a shepherd. He had sheep, they ate the grass, whatever was above. Well, maybe Cain didn't want to share things with Abel. And one day he said, you know, it's enough. Out with you, and now everything is mine. He killed Abel. So this way he had everything. What is above and what is below. Maybe that was it. Actually, we see something similar repeated a few generations later. You have Abraham on the scene. He has a wife by the name of Sarah, but she cannot have any children. So Sarah says to Abraham, you know what? I have a servant, a maid servant. Her name is Hagar. Go marry her too, and the children that you will have with her will be like my own children. And eventually, Hagar has a son by the name of Yishmael, Ismael. But... Now Sarah becomes pregnant, and she also has a son, and his name is Yitzchak, Isaac. Sarah does not like the presence of Ishmael in the same household with her son. She thinks he's a very bad influence upon her, and she tells Abraham, get this maid and her son out of the house. I don't like it. Well, Abraham is reluctant, but God tells him, do what Sarah says, and he sends her out of the home. Where does he send her? To another city? No, to the desert to die, and she sits by a tree and she puts her child a little bit away from her because she cannot see how her little child is going to die, but an angel appears and someone saves the child. But this is what was done. This child was competition to Isaac. Well, let's get rid of the child. Next generation, Jacob, the third patriarch, he has 12 sons, but apparently... He has preference for one of them. In particular, that's Joseph. He loves them more than everybody else. And the brothers feel that. It's not right, they feel. Uh, Jacob buys them some kind of tunic of several colors. But this wasn't just a plain mantle. This was somehow a regal robe. He was going to be the king over all the other brothers. He wasn't the son of the oldest. The oldest was Reuben. He was the son of one of the wives who was Rachel. He was the oldest of Rachel, but he was not the oldest of all the brothers. Well, they didn't like that at all. They felt unfair competition from Joseph, and they decided next opportunity they have, they're going to get rid of him. And when his father sent him on a mission to see what the brothers are doing, they immediately plotted to assassinate him. But one of them said, you know what? Why should we do that? We want to get rid of him, right? We want to eliminate the competition. Okay, you know what we do? We're going to throw him into a hole. There's no water there. There's nothing there. He can't survive there. He can't get out of there. So he'll die, and we won't have any blood directly on our hands. Okay. But one of the brothers decides something else. A caravan comes of slaves and other things. He says, you know what? Let's sell him as a slave. Let him live. 
but he'll live far away and a slave really can't do anything. So we'll get rid of him. We won't have killed him and there'll be no competition. This is what we should do and this is we'll get rid of it. Maybe that is the reason why God sent our ancestors into slavery in Egypt. So they should learn that that's not the way you solve problems, by getting rid of competition. When you have a problem, you want to overcome it, what you have to do is not eliminate somebody else. You have to bring together forces. You have to get help from somebody else. When you are united, you can overcome. But if you have internal disruptions, enmities, you want to eliminate one the other, you'll never get out of it. Maybe that was the reason that they went into slavery to learn something very important. Kol Israel arevim zebaze. We are all responsible one for another. And in order to achieve something, it is not by eliminating, it's by adding. It's not by dividing, it's by multiplying that you do. But many a time in our own lives, we face certain problems and we think that if we eliminate the competition, then we'll be stronger, but it isn't so. The solution of problems usually requires the bringing together of people, uniting people, making sure that we are all working in the same direction for the same purpose and not to have our own individual agendas where each one is pulling in his own direction because the basic problems of humanity can only be solved when all of us get together when we have the same purpose and we recognize that we are all children of one God maybe that is also another meaning of monotheism of believing in one God. Music